recently someone asked me what people had learnt, and I said, they haven't learned the half yet. So he said, well, tell me what the half is about, and I started, and it's taking a book. And the, the truth is that um, they, the lessons are so broad and so many, but one of the very basic ones is to be open to other people's tastes and values. We architects are very passionate and we get to feel we are so right and everyone else is so wrong. But I grew up in South Africa and I realized that um, there were so many different values and there's so many ways of looking at things and you couldn't just say one was right. The British who dominated culturally felt they were right. And I said, what's wrong with the way Africans build? Well, I just took that African view of art and the world and now made it my African view of Las Vegas, if you see what I mean. So when my teachers in planning school said, why don't you go to Las Vegas? All you architects hate it so much. Why don't you find out why millions of people come and visit it? It was not something that was new to me. I'd been doing that by looking at the, the, the beadwork of um, Mopak tribes, people, for example, now not done on vegetable goods, but on Coca-Cola bottles, and saying, isn't there something interesting in that? And I merely transferred that outlook in the interests of democracy and art, both things, and that still holds. There are many, many lessons beyond that, but that's a very basic one for young architects. You can be passionate and open-minded both. Follow your passions. Follow your bliss. Make yourself very, very good at the thing you love doing most. And when you have that sense of confidence because you know you do it well, um, you will be able to survive in architects' offices where in the beginning for young students it's very hard. And you'll be able to find ways to be heard because you are reliable, because you are skilled. And once you know how to do that, you'll be able to then help the people you want to help, for example, women architects or whatever it is, because you have the skills of, that are respected and you learn to know how to behave in such ways as to show people what should be done. That's one side of it. Another side is architecture is hard and also it's not well paid. It would be very nice if our clients paid us the way they paid their lawyers, but they don't. And it means that very often people, as they get older, don't stay in architecture. Think of the skills you are learning, because there are many, many other ways to use them. Now, I'm 86, and you'll see that I'm still now working on Las Vegas. It's been so pivotal, and I'm using the photographs that I took in my very early years after I'd um, studied and traveled and learned, among other things, how to photograph, I began to take photographs in order to teach. I took photographs to show my students the ideas I had. And the photographs of Las Vegas were largely done for that. And I showed them to uh, young architects and also urban designers and planners to help them understand about urbanism. And all of those I'm now working on again to put into a book, a book which uses photography to show ideas. So I'm still being an architect, but I'm living at home and we have an office in our dining room. We don't use it for dining anymore. And an architect can, that's not the, bad, the worst way to end up when you're 86. At 86, in looking back, Things seem to have nested, my experience in Africa, in Europe, and in America, all made a sequential um, system that was coherent. But it certainly wasn't when I was your age and looking at the beginning end of it. I said, I have no structure in my life. I, I don't understand. I have no philosophy. And I left South Africa and went in search of something like that. And eventually, I found all of that. My best teachers, hearing me saying, I need a structure in my life, could say something like, um, just get involved, get passionate. 
and be patient. You can be passionate and patient both. And eventually you will see what that pattern is that you are heading towards. Don't worry about it so much that you can't understand it at that point. If I'd known that better at that age, it would have helped. But now I can say it to you. And I also say one other thing. We know that this Las Vegas that we knew and learned so much from has left now. It's not there anymore. But yes, it is. It's in the graveyard, in the boneyard, on the outskirts of Las Vegas. It's awesome. It's beautiful. It's poignant. And it's in the care of young architects. Do remember it. Do support it. Do go and look at it. It'll tell you the whole story of how signs were constructed from, you could say, something like 1940 to the time when they were taken down. And it's very interesting. But it also should be something that you help to support.